Hi, Happy New Year to everyone and I hope you had a nice break over Christmas. Uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to post any videos, I ended up with this bug that seems to be going around the UK, uh, but I'm pretty much recovered now after quite an extended amount of time. In the last video we had a look at this L245 Soldier 9. This is a USB-C Soldier 9 that is designed to take JBC C245 style cartridges, but unfortunately in the video when I powered it up with a 65 watt USB power delivery power supply, it just kept shutting down every time we used a genuine cartridge because it had a much lower resistance than the cartridge that came with the unit. I also tried it after that with uh, quite a high power USB uh, power supply. I think it was like 160 watts or something like that, but that one shut down as well. Today what we're going to do is try and power it from the bench power supply. So I've rigged up a USB-C cable now to my bench power supply, which is capable of delivering about 300 watts. So we shouldn't have any trouble uh, with this. At the moment, obviously, there's no cartridge in it, and I've set the power supply to 5 volts. So uh, one nice thing about this is you can actually use it right down to 5 volts on a standard USB-C power supply. Uh, so if you're really in a pickle and you need to use this in some kind of mobile situation, you can do. And as we increase the bench power supply, we should see that reflected on the display. And there we go. We've got 20 volts going into it. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is we'll just plug in a genuine JBC cartridge and see if it can actually power it. Okay, so we're powered up with a current limit of 6 amps at 20 volts, so let's see if it can heat up this cartridge. And we're drawing a pretty consistent 6 amps. In fact, um, yeah, this 300 watt power supply can't quite supply enough power at peak to heat up this cartridge, but it seems to be uh, up to temperature now. I'll just give it a quick wipe on the sponge. And yeah, no problem melting solder. Let's have a quick go at soldering a few joints. Absolutely no problems there soldering uh, some standard through-hole parts. Now one of the things that is quite apparent is the bench power supply is making all kinds of clicking noises. So I think this has given it really quite a hard time. Let's have a look at the current waveform into the soldering iron. And you can see we're getting pulses of just over 6 amps, 6.3 amps or so. Uh, and then we're getting these very short duration pulses. Now this is really hard on any power supply, going from 0 all the way up to 6 amps and then right back down again for very short durations. So I think if you were thinking of using this uh, with a bench power supply, it would be better if it was supplied with some kind of capacitor bank or something, just to give the power supply a slightly easier time. Right, so pretty incredible performance there from the Soldier 9, and it's not really a surprise. We are massively overdriving this JBC cartridge. We're putting 300 watts into this cartridge, and it's not what it's designed for. It's designed for about 120 watts or so. So it's no surprise that we're delivering loads of power into the coin. Uh, I think it would be more appropriate to actually reduce the voltage so that we uh, drive this only at about 120 watts, maybe 130 watts peak. Um, that will be kinder on the cartridge because these will burn up out quite quickly and it'll also be kinder on the power supply which we're seeing those massive spikes of current. Now it would be nice if they made the firmware for this Soldier 9 open for other people to edit because I think there's quite a lot you could do in the firmware to do a better job of controlling these cartridges. Certainly with the PWM instead of those quite long one millisecond pulses uh, we could do something uh, much higher frequency, smaller duty cycles, uh, and also do things like take an impedance measurement or something like that, a power up, and work out the maximum power to be delivered into the cartridge. But I don't know if they're ever going to deliver you know, any kind of third-party firmware or the ability to edit it. A bit of a strange result also with the coin, because it's quite obvious that the coin was up to temperature, but we don't quite get as good solder coverage as with the Metcal systems. And I don't fully understand it because it's completely repeatable, Every time I use the Metcal system, we get better coverage of solder, 
but I'm using exactly the same solder, I'm using exactly the same coins, I'm cleaning them up in the same way. So I don't know if it's some magic with the RF or maybe the cartridges are just designed a little bit better. Uh, but it was quite clear this had spare capacity, would be able to heat some really big copper planes and do some decent soldering. So hopefully that's answered any questions. I do uh, think this soldering iron is quite nice. I just would like the ability to refine the firmware a bit more before I gave it my full recommendations. But I'll put a link to the, the item on AliExpress in the description down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, thanks for watching.